Hi, my name is Mux, and today we'll be taking a look at the MyFC Jack. So, first of all, this is a fuel cell, and I'm kind of known as somebody who criticizes fuel cells. As far as I know, I'm one of the few people who do these kinds of critical videos, or really even any videos at all, about uh, hydrogen that are not directly from manufacturers. Hydrogen for vehicles, it's not as clear-cut of a good solution as a lot of people think it is. Uh, yes, you can theoretically fuel up your car really quick, but that's literally the only advantage it has over battery electric vehicles. In pretty much every other respect, uh, batteries are better. One of the technologies that caught my eye was this tiny little phone charger device called the MyFC Jack. And it's, it's a pretty shitty phone charger. The idea is you have this little phone-sized receptacle that you put these little cards in. And the cards contain the actual fuel, so to say, and the receptacle is the fuel cell and the electric circuitry that converts the fuel cell voltage into 5 volts, 1 amp output. Now, what really caught my eye is the text. Insert the power card containing salt and water into the jack charger. That's really interesting because if you mix salt with water, you get salty water. You don't actually get power, you don't get hydrogen. So there has to be something else going on here. And I think the wording of salt, they they word it like it's common table salt, as everybody would understand the word salt. But in reality, it's another kind of salt. It's uh, the chemical definition of a salt which is a molecule that splits into a positively and negatively charged ion when dissolved in water. And this salt turns out to be sodium silicide. This is super interesting. Uh, I had not expected this to be so interesting. And also, it seems to be pretty old. Uh, I thought I knew a thing or two about hydrogen fuel cells, but uh, apparently not. This is an article from March 31st, 2011, so that's uh, five years ago. You take sodium silicide, uh, you add water, and you get an aqueous solution of sodium silicate. Silicates are what's in rocks, essentially. You get hydrogen, which is the stuff you want, and you get a little bit of heat. So, okay, uh, this is a hydrogen generator. It's a hydrogen generator from something solid, solid powder. This sounds very much like hydrite, but no, it's actually very energy dense. So the recoverable energy you can get, even if you include the weight of the water uh, in excess of 500 watt hours per kilogram. And if you just have the power powder by itself and you don't actually need to provide pure water, you can provide just any water. If you just have the powder by itself, it's like more than two kilowatt hours per kilogram. So that vastly outperforms, that outperforms batteries by about an order of magnitude. So that two kilowatt hour figure per kilogram for just the powder, that even includes the efficiency of the fuel cell. You can actually get about three kilowatt hours worth of hydrogen. This powder actually solves a lot of problems that hydrogen storage has had for a long time. You don't have to liquefy, so you don't get leaky tanks. You don't have to compress it into a hydride that is pyrophoric, so in contact with air or specifically in contact with moisture, it will burst into flames. And that's why hydrides are generally not very favored as a future storage system. Now, the sodium silicide allows you to produce hydrogen from this powder, but this powder is not pyrophoric. So you get very good safety. You don't need high pressure containers. You don't need fire safe containers. However, we have to do the math and we have to see if it is actually worth it. And what you really want to know for any kind of longevity, does this reaction make sense energy wise? So is the amount of energy you have to put in on the left hand side proportional to the amount you get out on the right hand side? So this seems easy, right? Uh, you have the sodium silicide, so you you calculate how much, how many kilojoules per mole you need to make sodium silicide, and then take water, which is essentially free, 
uh, and then you calculate on the other side how much energy equivalent you get from this hydrogen. Well, this seems easier said than done. Because we can find the energy we get from this hydrogen. We know the efficiency of a fuel cell. We know the energy content, the LHV of the hydrogen. But uh, the sodium psilocyte, there is actually only one company making it, and it's called Cigna Chem. Uh, they are specifically, they set up this company to make sodium psilocyte, to make this hydrogen technology. And their process is not a general process because psilocytes are a class of chemical compounds that are just not really made that much. They're only made on lab scale, so there's no real good uh, way of estimating how much energy it takes to make it. Because obviously sodium psilocyte, it's not available in ore form or something. You cannot just go out and mine it. You have to make it from sodium and silicon. So at this point, we can take literature figures for producing silicon and sodium. We can just take the raw silicon energies. This is about as efficient as you can make silicon, as I understand it. This is uh, how polycrystalline silicon is made nowadays for chip and solar panel production. Uh, about 11.6 megawatt hours per ton. So that's 329 watt hours per mole. On the sodium side, you can electrolyze sodium out of sodium hydroxide. And that's the lowest amount of energy I've found. And that's about 3.6 megawatt hours per ton. However, sodium hydroxide does not occur naturally. You have to make it with the chloralkylic process. At least, that's again the most efficient process I've found. Just looking around the literature. And that uses 1.8 to 2.8 kilowatt hours per kilogram. Add all that together and you get about 124 watt hours per mole of sodium. On the other side of the equation, we have uh, hydrogen which generates 244 kilojoules per mole of energy, i.e. Uh, we get 1220 kilojoules lower heating value, which is 338 watt hours. So putting all of that together, uh, we get like on an industrial scale, we can produce this sodium psilocyte with essentially 37.3% efficiency. For instance, regardless of the source of electricity, uh, producing hydrogen from electrolysis is about 65 to 70% efficient uh, and requires a compression or liquefaction step, which uses at least 10% uh, of your efficiency, generally even a bit more, uh, especially with liquefaction, uses about 20% of the energy of the fuel. So you get an overall efficiency of only about 50%. And likewise, producing hydrogen from methane uh, via steam reforming uh, also only is about 50 to 60% efficient total. So having near to 40% efficiency with this uh, technically, in many ways, superior process is very interesting. This is clearly a better solution than trying to run around with uh, trucks filled with liquefied or pressurized hydrogen gas. In my opinion, this kind of sodium psilocyte solution is awesome. It even solves the infrastructure problem. You can pretty much use any kind of container, any kind of car, any kind of truck to move around sodium psilocyte, and you're moving around a lot of energy at a time because it's very energy dense. So you don't need new pipeline infrastructure or anything like that. So this is a real solution to a couple of problems with the hydrogen economy. However, the efficiency is so low that the amount of primary energy that you need compared to, again, battery electric vehicles is very high. And this does not seem to be really solvable. If you look at the type of chemistry you can do to isolate silicon from any kind of rock or mineral, this 11.7 megawatt hours per ton, it's actually on the low side. In other words, 
this 40%-ish efficiency, this is even excluding making sodium psilocyte from elemental sodium and uh, silicium. Uh, this efficiency won't really get better. So, at first, I was really enthusiastic about this whole technology, sodium psilocyte, and really saw it solving a lot of problems I have with uh, the hydrogen economy. But in the end, it's not really a total solution, and it still has really some of these big hallmarks of uh, increased complexity and high cost with hydrogen fuel cells. Anyway, I hope you like this chemistry video. Uh, it's something I intend to do more often. I like the hydrogen stuff, but uh, I also like lots of other chemistry and just kind of deeper physics. So uh, thanks for watching and see you next time.